Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful little forest painting, maybe with a road kind of wandering through the middle. Of course, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to like and subscribe for future painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today with just a little bit of blue and some white. And I'll mix these together. Mostly white though, because I don't want it to be too dark blue. Okay. Now maybe way over here in the background. I'm going to lightly brush in just a bit of this color. And I went ahead and coated some of this area with a little bit of clear gel and white. Not everywhere. The center here is dry and I've got a couple other dry areas here in the sky because I know I want to put trees there. All right. Very, very faint. I don't want much of this color. Now I'll load a soft gray onto the filbert brush. This is just a little bit of blue some brown, touch of green, red, and of course white to make it a light gray. And maybe way back here, I'm going to start scrubbing in a few distant trees. Now the medium on here is really going to help to make these trees slide around, and that's fine. Normally this would be a little scary, but it's okay, because I know I want these extremely blurry and and so we don't care if it's if it gets too slippery up here. There. Now, I do have a sketch, as you can see. <laughs> we like to do those. And when I go to paint the bigger trees, I probably go ahead and take a paper towel and wipe down that area. That way I won't have the slippery oil down. And I won't have to worry about it. Because I definitely don't want those trees blurry. There. That's why a little bit of extra planning helps. Feather the edge, make it extremely soft. Now with our liner brush and a very, very thin mix of gray, I'm going to drop in several trees back here. Now this, this is very blurry. These are maybe like trees that are extremely far away. And then we've got a few here in front with some detail. And that's what, that's what we're working on now. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would never recommend getting thin oil paint anywhere close to the background. But this is a little different today. Really for only one reason, and that one reason is that I know what's going on here. And I know what I'm doing next. I know there's very little going over this area. So I don't have a whole lot to worry about. I've got maybe two trees at the most. Two trees and a couple of leaves from this tree sticking over here. I think we can handle that. Don't think that'll be a problem. But ordinarily, oh boy, would it be messy if you tried to paint a whole lot over this. So remember that. Where you put these, you're pretty much locked in. There. Of course, you can always do the paper towel trick. Just absorb whatever you don't want with the paper towel. It does make it pretty blurry, though, so you'll probably end up losing them if you have to touch them with a paper towel. But it's better than losing the whole painting if it came down to it. There. See, I can kind of drag down with the flat end of my brush to create these little edges. Isn't that neat? Just play around with your brush and find out different ways that you like to use it. <laughs> cool. Now I'll load up our filbert brush with a nice soft green color, kind of a mid-tone there. And let's go ahead and start at the top of the painting. And and work in some leaves. And be very careful to leave some holes of sky showing through. I really don't want to lose that. Now, <laughs> just in case, because I know it gets exciting, you do a lot of painting and you end up covering up the whole canvas. If that happens to you, and it's happened to me before in the past, that's why I'm extra careful when I do this. If that happens to you, what you can do is, you have two options. You can wait a couple weeks till it's fully, completely dry, and then go back and paint your sky in. Or use a paper towel on your finger and kind of just remove some paint and then do your best to, to get some clean blue and white over it. It won't be perfect, but it should be close. There. <laughs> now we should talk about this painting. This is really fairly simple as far as the composition is concerned compared to, say, like a vast mountain or something like that. So because it's simple, you would think it would be easier, but it's really not because you have to do each piece of the painting better. Because you don't have such an interesting composition, 
to kind of grab the, uh, the viewer. So you need extra details. You need many more colors. So in these trees, you got to put brown, gold, blue, green, everything in the trees. You can't just do like two or three colors. It has to be like five or six colors. That gives it more interest. Now, this is too light for, for down here, so we're gonna change to a darker color as we come down. But up here, this is kind of where the sun is catching all the leaves, and it's just a little brighter up here. Go even brighter yet at the top if you want to. A little more yellow, oh yeah. And of course, we'll highlight all of this. Now we'll pick up a nice soft brown color, and with this, I'm gonna scrub right here to create a path. There. Of course you wanna go light in the background because you never want your underpainting too dark in the background. Not if you're trying to make it look distant, which is exactly, exactly the point here. And when you're doing something that's really this close, and let's face it, most everything here is pretty close. Even these trees that we can barely tell they're trees, it's just color. Those are even fairly close. So what I'm doing to create a little extra depth when things are this close is I'm really making the value changes pretty distinct. In other words, I'm kind of I'm making this extremely light and this down here will be extremely dark. And that way you kind of help to provide a little extra contrast, a little extra depth in the painting, which is really the whole point. We want some depth in here. There. Now with our filbert brush, I'll drop on a few leaves to, to this tree here. Now, in my mind, the lights here in the center are sort of filtering through. Now that doesn't mean we can't have some light filtering through as well over this side, but for the most part, these trees are very light and these will be a bit darker. We'll have some nice strong highlights on them, but, but the underpainting is darker. That's why it's dark all the way up at the top. Also provides some pretty incredible contrast, which is exactly what we need in this painting. There. I'm not worried about leaving as much sky through this tree. There we go. This tree is definitely darker. With our three quarter brush, I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna work on this road a bit here. Now over here, we're gonna work with that later. It's not gonna be too highlighted over there and it's gonna be catching just a little light from this side. Like the sun's maybe really high up or, <laughs> I don't know, it's just neat but it is some way coming through the center of these trees, or maybe it's just the trees around are blocking the light and doing very different things with it. I got a little bit of brown here, and I want you to vary your color so it's not all bland and the same old thing over and over again. There, soften areas that need to be softened. Nice. This three quarter brush works well because it's nice and soft and it layers over the paint we have underneath. Now with our three quarter brush, I'm gonna highlight the left hand side of this tree. Now I've decided that I'm gonna play around with the light source a bit. Originally I actually had the highlight on the, on the right hand side then I erased it. I decided that I wanna change it to the left hand side because after looking at it, something just didn't look quite right to me. Although we put a bit of a light spot here in the middle, it just wasn't enough to justify the light coming down the middle of the painting. So I changed it. Now the light's filtering through from left to right, and that's fine. What this is gonna let me do is, it's gonna give me an opportunity to almost like use these little holes in the trees to open up light spots and cast shadows across the path, making the path even more interesting. So that's kind of a bonus. <laughs> All right, so that means we need to change some of, the, some of the features down here that I started working on. So let me take this color and we come right over here. Now the highlight has to come over on this side, but that's an easy fix. There. Now with our little three quarter brush, I'm gonna drop in some highlight here. These are obviously several trees growing together. And so you don't have to, you don't have to plan out each limb perfectly. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about exactly where it hooks up because it could hook up to any one of these trees. My point is just be, be pretty loose when you highlight these. 
create a little bit of shape and, and direction in these limbs as you go. Just like this. Now, this is very much a dark, almost a black underpainting. And that's okay, but I want to enhance it by adding in some mid-tone greens. That way it's not just yellow and green and then black. So we have some, something kind of in the, in the middle there that helps. And I like that. That can cover up the trunk and all that. And then hop right back to your basically just yellow and green mix to, to highlight. Nice. We can add an extra bonus highlight when we're done but sort of get it filled in first. Now with our little detailed round brush here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add on a couple of highlights to just the tips of the clumps of leaves. Now maybe, I don't wanna overdo, and especially don't wanna overdo in the middle, I just <laughs> thought I needed something right there. And of course you can use this to add little subtle color changes. This is really good because after you use your three quarter brush, this is so tiny, and it's also pretty soft, you'll be able to layer paint over without cutting through as much. Now, if you, if you have trouble with it mixing, you need to load more paint on the brush. I have quite a bit in the brush right now. All right, there we go. Not too difficult. We really don't want a whole lot of this, just a bit. Next, I'll carefully drop in a little bit more highlight to this tree over here on the right, and I'm using a detailed brush. Again, this just helps to layer over wet paint because it's soft and it's small. It won't disturb a big area. Just barely hit the surface. And really the trick to this is basically loading up the brush so that it's so full that the, bri the bristles are barely touching the canvas. So if the paint is just about the only thing touching the canvas, that's about the only thing that gets pulled off. It doesn't, what I mean is the bristles don't actually pick up anything. So it's a way to, to layer over wet paint very, very brightly, over a highlight even, without making a muddy painting. Make sure you load a lot of paint at the tip of the brush. That's the secret. <laughs> there. And it's nice, it has a long handle so you can kind of get back if you need to and really be loose. And give it a lot of nice bark texture. <laughs> there, this is a lot of fun. You could sit here and paint trees all day if you want to. But I don't think I'm going to. Just a few details here and there. Now with our little detailed brush again, I'm just gonna drop in well, a few little flowers. I got blue and white on the brush, but mostly white. Because I don't want them, I don't want them to be blue flowers. I want them to be like little daisies or something. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll just do this basically just touch the canvas over and over again until you have just a few little little flowers you don't need a whole lot but they do add a nice touch and then of course as you go further back you also you need them but you but you don't want them to be distinct or individual so you just sort of smudge with the brush it'll mix with the green underneath if you hit it too many times <laughs> really if you hit it any more than just once or twice so be careful. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.